Teobrugi that uh, again we speak about form finding uh, with a constrained version of the force density method. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me and see my screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's so uh, it's again uh, the force density method in its original version, but combined with the mathematical programming this time. And I would like to start with a very well known problem of the detection determination of funicular polygons for uh, arches uh, subject to self weight. And the way to attack the problem is looking at the equilibrium. We have already seen in the previous presentation that a very important point is the linearization of the equilibrium equation with respect to the vertical coordinates. And this, for instance, can be done introducing the thrust. So the horizontal component of the reaction as done in this method of the thrust network analysis and the reformulation. But for sure, one can use the force density method. And I would refer to those two works that implement uh, polygons or networks with grids uh, that have fixed plan projection. But in this case, they mainly deal with the control of the height of the nodes that is performed in average. And I would like to investigate the use of mathematical programming to do it point by point. So along the lines of this work, this works, you can see that if you write the horizontal equation of equilibrium, you can uh, see very easily that not all the force densities are independent, but you can define a, a subset, a limited subset. And in this case, there is only one independent force density, of course. And so the proposal in this talk is to set up a formulation like this. That simply means for this simple problem that you use as minimization unknown, the independent force densities here in uh, the force uh, density that I have labeled Q1. And the vertical coordinates of the restraint node here for symmetry reason only one, so Z1. The objective function can be, for example, the thrust, if you would like to minimize the horizontal reaction. And there is a set of local constraints. The first, the first one referred to those find by using the vertical equilibrium to write the coordinates of the node with respect to the minimization unknown. And the second one refers to uh, the research of antifunicular structures, so the control on the sign of the forces, the force densities. And uh, looking at this problem, it's important to see that the objective function is written in the so-called direct variable, Q1. And if you look at the constraints, they are a function of the direct variable, Z1, but the reciprocal variable, 1 over Q1. And these analytical forms are more or less those you can find in a very classical problem of size optimization of linear elastic structures, that is this one. You are interested in defining the cross section such that the weight is minimized with constraint of the stresses on the strength. And for this kind of problem, there exist uh, specific methods of sequential convex programming that are able to handle this kind of approximation. Uh, Colina MMA, for example. And these methods are already used uh, in a bigger, let's say, uh, size optimization problem uh, that are the topology optimization problem, for example, with stress constraint. So the idea is to use this kind of method, mathematical programming, to cope in this case with this uh, simple problem. Uh, here I will use, uh, and in the next slides, I will use the cross refer to points uh, of the polygons and networks that touches the upper bound and to cycles of the lower bound. In this case, of course, the solution is, is very simple. You can check by hand. With this formulation, you can essentially do uh, solve two problems. The first one is a preliminary assessment of uh, uh, structures like this one. So this hemispherical dome that is subject to vertical loads as self-weight but also horizontal loads. The same formulation can be, can be applied to this kind of problem. So you start from a grid, you investigate the horizontal equilibrium to detect uh, the independent for densities. And in this case, you are interested in finding a network, for example, minimum thrust that lie within the envelope. And this is a possible solution with the forces and uh, uh, the reaction. And in this case, you can use this method also to investigate the possible load path when they are not known. And for sure, if you intend the lower bound and the upper bound uh, enforced 
over the coordinates as a, a definition of the design domain. You can use this method for form finding. And uh, in this case, it is not a problem to deal with self-weight that is a design-dependent load because this gradient-based method are based on analytical sensitivity and it's, it is quite easy to compute the analytical sensitivities also in this case. So this is a simple example of a symmetric structure. There are a lot of restraints and the number of dependent, uh, independent unknowns uh, is very low. So you need uh, very few seconds to control point by point all the coordinates. And the idea was to uh, do a first attempt investigation to join the well-known force method with respect to technique of sequential convex programming. And it seems that this can be used to control the eight of the nodes. Uh, and one of the possible advantages is the fact that there is one general procedure that you can use with different grids, topology of the grids, restraints and loads. We have seen the self way that is a design dependent. Of course, this is just the first step, a first investigation of a simple algorithm. And I would like to, to do more for sure, both from the numerical point of view, because there are a very small number, there is a very small number of active constraints at convergence. So it could be possible to use some technique uh, that comes from topology optimization, stress constraint topology optimization to speed up the procedure. And of course, this multi-constrained environment uh, could be endowed with uh, uh, other constraints that could be uh, more meaningful with respect to, to construction. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Matteo. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, I have one. Okay. I have. So I'm working on a similar problem. As, I know very well. I think you know, yes. <laughs> and uh, my biggest problem in this case is to uh, impose a constraint on the horizontal position of nodes. I, I'm trying to keep it free and then constrain them somehow. Okay, but do you uh, have an experience with that? Uh, just to, to understand better, you mean to prescribe that the point is always at the same coordinate? Or no, 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 no. It, it is nodes. free to move, but within a given uh, uh, domain. Yes, well, in this case, if you look at the perimeter, you, uh, this is free to move uh, from a uh, form finding point of view in the vertical direction because yes. the assumption is uh, uh, that you are using fixed grid. The restraint of these nodes in this case along the perimeter, along the edges, just refer to the fact that in this case for symmetry, uh, I don't know if you see this end of my screen, but it cannot move in the direction perpendicular to the edge. Yes. So just a decoupling uh, of the equilibrium equation, uh, I don't have to work with fully restrained nodes, I would like to say. So I can use nodes that are restrained only in the vertical direction, in the horizontal, uh, and so ever. And uh, it works. So if it, if I, I, was think, I was thinking to uh, an opening in which you can have the, the, the border that can move horizontally. Yes. And, and the, but, the border but, that can... Uh, I have... Uh, the, um, if you mean in the design, uh, it is not a low. So uh, I can only at the moment control the vertical movement. I would say okay. that uh, the algorithm in this case is like this, and it was inspired by the, by the, the works you have seen in the first slide. Uh, I think that probably you can also enforce, uh, how to say, another path along which the coordinate can move, and probably this would generate some relationships such that, again, you can find some dependent and independent loads. But the results that you see here refer to the fact, to the fact that the grid has the plan projection that is fixed. So you can design only movement along the vertical coordinates. But for example, as a difference with respect to the approach that you have seen that needs for fictitious elements of such uh, kind of elements at the boundaries, if you have to decouple the restraint, I mean, if you don't have to deal only with fully restrained node, this is not an issue in the sense that uh, you can deal with it. But if I have an O, for example, in the middle of this design, it is no problem for sure if you uh, know that you control only the vertical coordinates. There is the prescription of the fact that the horizontal coordinates, coordinates are fixed, at least at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe the, there could be a lot of things to discuss about that because the number of solutions could increase in the, the 
the point raised by Francesco, but... but yes, the, the problem is very complicated because yeah. you are uh, doing like a form finding with constraint both on vertical and horizontal direction, which is not the standard TNA approach. But no, so the point maybe, is maybe that, maybe we can discuss. No, I just I would like just to say that the constraint are only in the horizontal direction. So the geometrical constraint is this is this the grid is fixed, and so this okay. comes from assessment problem. Okay, so this is the point. So okay, thank you. If you're interested in covering a surface, you can use these, but this is more constrained than a simple method, of course. Okay, thank you again, Matteo, and thank uh, you interesting work and discussion also.